I'm in rugby with an iPad like that, like walking around with an iPad trying to <laughs> trying to iMessage people. It's just, oh mate, it's so stressful. But the main thing I was worried about is if we don't do monitoring and stuff like that in the morning on, on our phone, we get fined. So I'm just losing money at the same time. Yeah, so absolute <sighs> nightmare. But we could have had worse weekends because we could have had a game back <laughs> against could have had a game against Quinns. Oh gosh, you've done that to me, have you? Oh. Oh. It was growly, man. It was going so smoothly as well. Everything was going wonderfully. Then suddenly old um Tommy Allen went off and someone else we won't mention his name came back on and then it all kicked off, didn't it? Oh yeah, he's, he's a dick dastardly villain, that one. Was it all him? No, it wasn't all him. Um that was just like it's just like, you know, when the game sort of how the game rolls emotionally, it just sort of, it started going their way and then it just kept going. Like, you know, when you just quite don't quite feel that energy to like come back from it. And then technically speaking, there were just like too many sort of bad reads out wide. And when you're against a team like Quinns, they're just, they're amazing at finding space. That's sort of their X factor. They're like, we don't win with D, we win with scoring more tries than you. We'll concede a few, but you'll concede way more. <laughs> Well, for, pe- for people that don't watch rugby and listen to this, which I doubt there's very many people, but <laughs> it was what, tw- 21 nil after like 25 minutes or something? Yeah. yeah. To you boys, exactly. like to hosing them, yeah. laughing, giggling, like joking, high-fiving. Let's do this. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Next yeah. ne- ne- minute. Some some bits of deja vu there, eh? Yeah. It was, and, and, and oh man, I like, do you know what? Doing this podcast last year, you, you'll yet to understand this. This is probably your first week of it big time, but sometimes games don't go your way and you still have to do media yeah. and you try and dodge it. But when you're on a podcast, you can't dodge it. You have to just go and roll with it. And all the boys will be listening going, what, right, what's he been saying on the podcast? So you got to be careful, mate. I know, mate. Yeah, it's true. I know exactly what you mean. It's like, what did I just say? Did I say something I shouldn't have? Oh, no. Hopefully Pat doesn't listen to this. Oh, my God, I've been losing my job. <laughs> you know, your brain's just jumping <laughs> Oh no, don't. Oh, well, mate. it could have been worse. Stop. We got hosed. We got hosed by Treviso, like nearly fifty points. So, Quinns, you know, winners of the winners of the league last year, Treviso. So I'm with you, mate. I'm with you. We're here for you, aren't we, Mark? We're here for him. Completely. Yeah. But it was a bit of history repeating itself, Max. We're not going to let you off that lightly. Did you speak about the semi final from last year and how there was a similar pattern of play unfolding? Yeah, it was obviously sort of a big part of the emotional motivation going into the week. But um, we sort of treat, because of just how we'd gone so far, we sort of treated it as a fresh week, you know, just to like really just concentrate and sort of chase the feeling of just playing and having a good, like having a good crack out there. And it was all going very well. And then sort of off the back end of that, we sort of just talked about it being a, like a um, sort of an opportunity. Like we find ourselves, we were top of the table last season. I know we find ourselves near the bottom and we're sort of misfiring, um, but we find it as more of like an opportunity, you know, like to sort of strive and persevere through like some decent adversity. I think it's quite exciting. I know it's a bit of a bit of a cliche, but um, a lot of the times when you're being, when you're a very successful team, sometimes what made you successful um, kind of atrophies and it's quite nuanced and you're not sure what it is. So you have to go back through this rebuilding pro- like process to kind of find what that was again. Um, and that's sort of the, the sort of situation we find ourselves in at the bottom. Um, I'll, I'll tell you what to do. Get, We're going to say over... great escape. No, <laughs> no. I'll tell you what to do. Get over to Fiji, get some pawpaw leaves and wrap Semi up with pawpaw leaves. Cover him in the yeah. motherfuckers. Just and make, him. Make, make him work again and then just load him with tape. Fill him up with tape, wrap him to, yeah. the, to the nines and get him out. Just get him out there. Like Undertaker vibes just comes out, just mummified and the leaves just like... <laughs> Semi ready. Yeah. Semi <laughs> Mamma mia. <laughs> He's like hard out Italian. It's real. These all his catchphrases are in Italian. I love Fijian accents. They're all so weird and varied, and very like melodious. I love it. It's oh, great no. madness. I, I just want to rewind a tiny bit before we get into Ryan's game. Slightly. Oh, yeah. Back to my phone or <laughs> Well, actually, clearly with your phone, it's divine retribution for that video that you put up about about Adam Hastings, and then suddenly your phone goes missing, mate. So it's it makes sense, doesn't it? 
Nice yeah, stole your phone, bro. Yeah. yeah, that that wasn't fair of me, especially with the state of my arms. But I wouldn't go taking money for a bicep an occlusion t-shirt. Wait, let's let's rewind this. So, did he was he actually angry with you about that? No, nah, I'm sure he wasn't angry. I got a message saying snake or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I enjoyed oh, it immensely. Listen, what I said to him is, you can't get angry, mate. You've been paid, so now you have to take the flack. You know, this is, these are all paid yeah. adverts, surely. Like, I'm ge- I'm guessing he's not a massive advocate of it. Oh, I can't say that because, oh, now we're going to ruin the branding of the T-shirt. But anyway, if the per- person owns these T-shirts, send me one. I'm the real person <laughs> to try on. If you can make my arms get bigger, then it, it works. But there ain't no chance because I've been trying for 12 years and they are still twiglets. So you, I'll, I'll tell you, who does have one actually at the Bears, Dave Atwood. No, no, I kid you not. No, I kid you not. And what's he? I remember he brought it in for like two days, I think. I remember, but he's like an avid bicep, like worshiper. Oh, really? Yeah. He's always just there at the dumbbell rack, just swinging forties up. He is good at it, but he's swinging them like the inertia. It's like zero techers, but he loves it. Like. Everyone's like, we got to get ready for the like. You know, when guys are warming up, they're doing like their posterior chain, they're stretching. Dave's warm up is just buys and tries. He's just obsessed. He's like big pipes all day, boys. It's weird, mate. It's like mate, a, it's an obsession. Maybe this is bloody clever advertising because what they've done, they've gone right. Give Hayster the t-shirt. He's gonna get the piss ripped out of him. Then they're gonna talk about it on podcast and go, guess what? That was funny. <laughs> yeah. And then send me out a t-shirt. Send me out a t-shirt. Becomes- I'll- I wear it on a night out. I wear it on a night out. Get some press ups going on a night out. Tighten them up. It just get, give me one, and we'll see what happens. <laughs> what I will say about occlusion training is it is legit. Like you get the pump of the gods. It is outrageous. Yeah, it's, it's horrible. I've done it before with the proper. Yeah, you've done it before. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The the um, like when you're taking your pulse cuffs, those bad boys. Wait, how does it work? So you basically get like either like a blood pressure cuffing thing, like an airbag. Look at these bad boys. It's just an opportunity. And then what you do is, or you get like a wrap and you just tie it real tight. And then you just do like, everything's like AMRAP to failure. So you're just doing like maximal bicep uh, curls. You're doing tricep dips. You're doing all the sorts of madness. And then because the blood, I don't even know the science, but I'm going to talk about it as if I do. The blood sort of, is um, sort of reduced to that area, so there's more muscle there. tissue breakdown, so more necrosis, I suppose, of the of the fibers, and therefore, as more significant sort of like adaptation occurs. I've just it doesn't it up. doesn't hurt until you stop. When when you stop, suddenly yeah. you're like, it's like panic, start sweating, and you're like, oh, my arms are going to fall off, and then you have to exactly. go again. No, hold on, we're giving them too much airtime. <laughs> let's get move on. Right, let's move on. 